pull this up. All right, so everybody has this sheet. Read the last line of mine, Jason Dollar. If you're easily offended, you should probably divert your ears. Seriously, it starts out pretty rough. All right. Uh, this is from the book that I just actually got the contract on Tuesday of last week, so I'm really Yay. excited. Yeah. And like you said, this is my first reading like in the real world, not just in school, so I'll probably be a little shaky, but we'll see how we go. Um, this is from Grit. <clears throat> Chapter 1, seven days prior to the program, Saturday. I came on my cat today, again. <laughs> That's what I meant by <laughs> On. It's not like I used the cat. She was just in the wrong spot at the wrong time, or the right time, depending on if she's into that kind of thing. And since it's happened twice now, I can only assume that she likes it. <laughs> I asked her, but she just stared at me, judging me like cats do. And don't get all preachy on me. I was beating it to normal, red-blooded American, woman-on-woman -woman porn. It just happened that I finished in, into my paper towel when she walked between my legs, and I lost focus for a split second. You would not believe how hard it is to get the cum out of the fur of a cat. <laughs> 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 okay. My days aren't completely circled around masturbation. <laughs> I mean, I have the aforementioned cat, a car, an apartment, the 401k. I'm an upstanding citizen with a job and health insurance, and if you saw me from a distance, you might say, there's a good-looking fellow who's grabbing life by the horns. <laughs> Or maybe not, that's kind of a weird expression to begin with. Maybe you would say that if you were an older gentleman. But back to the whole masturbation thing. What can I say? I'm a single man in my 30s. It's an important part of my life. I mean, I did have a little experiment to see how many times I could go in one day today, but that doesn't make me weird, it just makes me a go-getter. <laughs> I can't believe I wrote this. <laughs> Before closing my eyes for the night, I put some Andy cream on my soldier and like to think about work. When I say like to, I mean hate to. It just happens that my brain doesn't give me a choice. Six days prior to the program, Sunday. When everything in front of me unblurs, the first thoughts that come to mind are that I should have named the cat Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> I should start the day off right. I reach down for a tug and realize that I'm a little sore from yesterday. While I've overdone it before, I really thought that the A and D would keep me safe. That phrase, it's like a sore neck, you can't beat it, finally makes sense. And I retract my hand to rest on my chest. I also need to clear something up. I'm about to let you in on something that no man has ever told you. The secret about our masturbatory habits. The biggest myth is that masturbating has something to do with sex. I know, you're saying, you have your dick in your hand, it has everything to do with sex. But in our mind, it has to do with our job, or our drive home, or a fight we had with someone. Sometimes it has to do with sex, but like most of the time, of the time, of the time it's just because we had a bad day and want to focus on something else. It almost never has anything to do with you or the amount of sex we do or do not have. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this goes across the board for almost all men. Brothers, husbands, boyfriends, fathers, and your grandfather. <laughs> we all take it for a ride every once in a while. The only difference between me and the other guys out there, I'm not sugarcoating the realities of my misadventure. My entire Sunday circles around the frustration of knowing that I have work the following day. I know that I obsess about it. I know that it's not healthy. But when I buy the Sunday paper in the morning and look through the advertisements in the middle, I wish I had the money to afford any of the new electronics. Eventually, this loops back to the job that I have and my unhappiness at said job. I end up at the bookstore after the paper gets boring, and while I'm browsing the self-help section, I think to myself that if I wanted, I could be better. But I'm stuck in a corporate job and don't really have the drive to do anything other than be anything other than be mediocre. After hours of wishing and hoping for someone to step in and fix everything, I walk out of the store exhausted. I get home and immediately turn the alarm clock on. Doing so pisses me off because it means that I have to wake up in a few hours. This anger reminds me of my boss, who reminds me of the job, which reminds me that I have to turn in some big projections this week to my fake boss. We'll get to that. Which brings me to why my penis is in my hand again. <laughs> I take a quick survey of the room to make sure that the cat is not in the local trajectory. <laughs> After a brief movie about a sexual experience I had earlier this year is finished playing on my eyelids, 
I feed the cat some wet food, still trying to make up for the incident yesterday. <laughs> I fall asleep to negative thoughts about Monday morning. And the song Come On Eileen by Dexie's Midnight Runners plays in my brain. Five days prior to the program, Monday. My heart is beating fast and I feel like something is wrong. Then a crushing realization sweeps on, over me. The terrifying noise is just my alarm screen. I'm sure this has happened to more people than just me. That feeling that something horrible has just occurred, and then the instant understanding that it's just time to wake up and go to work. Something horrible is only about to happen. You know, now that I think about it, I should have started this story with the first day of work. That way you get to see the pressures of my daily life, the reasons that I am the way I am, and once you accept the fact that it's completely natural to have multiple daily releases, you can re really start experimenting with boundaries and speed trials. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what the exact job title is. Just know that I work in a cubicle wasteland. My boss reminds me daily that I'm easily replaceable, a fact that is driven home by the loss of a coworker to a recent college graduate. My office is covered in corporate propaganda, speaking of support, teamwork, and success. <laughs> Reading it over every day is one day closer to ripping off the walls and using it as kindling to burn the building down. I know I'll never do it, but I do like to make jokes about it with my coworkers. Before working in corporate America, I didn't understand why most people hated their jobs. My eyes have been opened. <laughs> I've realized just how much power a stapler and hole punch have in, con in the confines of false walls and meetings about productivity. My cubicle is covered in crum crumpled papers, empty coffee cups, and other assorted trash. I'm doing a study on how long it takes a fast food cheeseburger to grow mold in one of my dress desk drawers. It's been three weeks and there's no sign. I pretend to believe in the saying a messy desk is the sign of a hard worker instead of what it really means. I'm a messy person. Does the dirty cards and have a good driver? An uncut lawn prove someone's green thumb? My desk is dirty because I don't feel like cleaning it. Thanks for the thought though, I heard they're all that matter. Do you have the projections for this month, Marky? Diane asks from the other side of the cubicle. She's an obese woman which I believe makes her personality even harder to deal with. This month her hair is the color of a dying violet, and I truly hope that it was an accident and not the color she asked for. I'll have them to you this afternoon, Diane. Virginia wants them as soon as she comes back, and she'll be back on Friday. Did you know that some people use their power for, power for evil? I've met the worst of them. Her name is Virginia Bird, and this week she's on a business trip to Palm Springs. Not because the rest of us couldn't do the presentation, but because it's in Palm Springs, and she's the boss. Diane, I know exactly what needs to be done, and when it's due. Just because Virginia said you were in charge doesn't mean you should take her personality, too. I peek over the cube and see Diane's face change from the powerful boss type into the vengeful coworker type without missing a beat. I'm sorry, that was over the line. I'll have the projections to you by the end of the day. Thank you, but this is going in my report, she says, as I figured it would. Most of the rest of the day is focused around searching the internet for things I can send to friends and coworkers to amuse myself and impress them. <laughs> Some e cards is my favorite website. The important, important projections Diane wants will only take a few minutes, but I have a form of procrastination that I picked up in high school that I can't seem to shake. My mid-morning date with five fingers in the bathroom reminds me that it's okay to smile at work. There's a lunch break in there. An hour or so before I leave the office for the day, I sneak off to the upstairs bathroom and take care of myself. No one's ever in there. On the way home from the city to the suburbs, <coughs> I have an urge to drive my car off the bridge into the Susquehanna River, but I silence my brain with the promise of a beer, a cigarette, or a wanking, depending on what's available at the house at the time. My apartment is a one bedroom on the second story of a house that used to be a single residence. When I walk up to it, I pretend that it's all mine. I have a kitchenette that reminds me of a place to cook, but not a place I want to cook. I'm almost positive that my bedroom was a sitting room and my living room was a bedroom, but I can afford it and it doesn't smell bad. My last apartment smelled like a dog food plant pissed on a curry field. No offense to Indians, <laughs> I just don't know how someone could possibly enjoy anything that has curry. Or the smell of dog food for that matter. Not that I think Indians put dog food in their curry. <laughs> my day ends with me eating something with too many preservatives, watching something mundane on TV, and finally falling asleep after shooting it into a work sock. I sit up in bed looking across the room at a mirror, and I'm disgusted by what I see. There's an extra layer of weight around my waist that's pulling over itself. Also, by the looks of my facial hair, I apparently don't care about impressing anyone anymore, <laughs> which I may or may not have just realized. Tomorrow, wake up, coffee, repeat. Welcome to every day of my life.
So later that week he gets fired on Friday, and this is right after he gets fired. And this is a quick short part that I just I really like. Um, so yeah, he just got fired. I beat myself up on the drive. No one would have ever known except me. It would have been a perfect farewell. By the time I walk up the path to my front door, I'm not even focused on losing my job. I'm just pissed off that I didn't come on my boss's car. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta buy the book. <laughs> uh, then all of the anger I can muster turns to the door. Since I moved in, the key hasn't worked like it should. I slide the key in and twist the knob, twist the key, shake them both, and hear that the TV is still on through the door. I must have forgotten to turn it off. With no job, I might want to be more cognizant of my power usage to save some money. I like telling myself things that I know will never change. Finally, the key grabs, the door swings open, and a man on TV says, hate your job? I don't have a job, I respond. <laughs> Want to make more money? I'd like to make any money. <laughs> Behind on bills? Not yet, but I'm sure that's on the way. Do you have a name that everyone makes fun of? What? <laughs> Is your name Marky? What the? Are you a loser with no job, no girlfriend, and no life? That's a little harsh. With our new extreme system, we offer a money-back guarantee that we can change your life. What do you have to lose? If you use the program and follow the guidelines, we promise your life will be fuller, more rewarding, and all around less depressing. I don't need a stupid pro- Marky, pick up the phone and call. You have nothing to lose. <laughs> if you ask me why I wrote down the number, I couldn't tell you. I guess it's not every day that your TV talks to you. The screen flickers for a second and everything seems to go back to normal. The program streaming through the television reminds me of one of those weight loss programs, but the way the man is describing it, it involves everything, not just what people eat. The cat is sitting in the middle of the floor staring at me, and I believe that somewhere in her little cat brain she's still holding a grudge about coming on it, which most people know is for life. <laughs> Maybe she's still pissed off about me naming her Spike. With a few minutes of going back and forth, I start dialing the number, that was on the screen earlier, but before I can finish, my phone rings and the caller ID says another number. I only notice it's different because it's an 800 number and I started to dial an 866 number. A strange feeling comes over me and I pick up. Hello? Hello, Mark. This is Clint over at Your Personalities. What's holding you back? Commercial you just saw. How are you? I'm doing... No, you're not. I guess I'm... Mark, we're going to ship the package to you tonight free of charge because we know you need it. In fact, I just finished boxing it. It's already on the way. You should be receiving it tomorrow. Is there anything I can help with? Well, first, my name is Mark. Sec, you'll find out tomorrow your name is Mark now. What's going on here? It's already in the mail, tomorrow morning. How much is the program? It sure is, Mark. Shipped and in transit. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to answer any of my questions, are you? No problem, Mark. Your credit card number is 439 <laughs> <laughs> expiring November of next year, correct? Yeah, that sounds... How did you get that number? If you have any questions once you receive the package, I will be more than happy to help you, Mark. Please call back any time. The line goes dead, and I immediately think I'm dreaming. This is the same program that was on yesterday, the one I fell asleep to. I'm at a loss for what to do with myself. I'm apparently going to do a program that I didn't really sign up for, and have the feeling that my life is no longer in my control. I pull out my laptop and type in your personality is what's holding you back into the search bar. Every review, every single review is a 5 out of 5, a thumbs up, a perfect 10. I know I should be freaking out, I should not be as calm as I am, but after reading Free Daisy's review, <laughs> this program changed my life in the way that I can never repay. If I could have done the program earlier, I would have. If I could recommend this to everyone, I would, and I do. If you have the opportunity to participate in something this amazing, take it. You will not be disappointed. How could I not reach for the stars? Which reminds me of the main and more important use of my laptop. I shut the door to my bedroom and reached down to put a pair of work socks to good use. After a few minutes, I throw an abused sock in the hamper and open the door so the cat can come in if she wants. My eyes, eyes go heavy and consciousness disappears. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. That was only special. Our next reader this evening. <laughs>